السلام عليكم ورحمة الله لعل روسيا تعود اليوم إلى منطقة غرب آسيا من جديد البعض يترقب ذلك بكراهية الآخرون بريبة وثمة فريق ثالث ينظر بأمل إلى هذه العودة لكن قبل تقييمها وفقا لمصالح ومواقف مختلف اللاعبين والمراقبين نحتاج أولا إلى فهم كيفية عودة روسيا ما الذي يمثل روسيا المعاصرة على الخريطة الجديدة لتوازن القوى العالمية سيما فيما يتعلق بالمنطقة ككل للإجابة إجابة عن هذه التساؤلات وأكثر في صلب الملف الروسي اسمحوا لنا أن نستقبل من ماسكو المفكر والمنظر في علم الاجتماع السياسي البروفيسور ألكسندر دوغن أبا الأوراسية الجديدة والنظرية السياسية الرابعة في القسم الثاني من هذا الحوار المعمق أهلا بكم إلى حلقة جديدة من الداخل معكم زينب صفار تابعونا Professor Dugan, you talked extensively and explained thoroughly the Russian return to the Middle East. Some regard it with hate, others with suspicion, some with hope as you described it. Before any evaluation of this return, sir, might you first clarify how Russia returns? What represents contemporary Russia on the new map of balance of world powers, especially regarding West Asia? So I think that um, that is important that now we are assisting the end of the myth of the world's uh, war against Islam. So uh, the Islamic world have, has lost its important as possible enemy for globalism because there appeared the real enemies of, uh, uh, of, of globalist hegemony. Uh, in, in, the, in the case of Russia and China. And that transformed the role of uh, Islamic um, uh, East um, and uh, Middle East because uh, the, this, uh, this territory, the, the, uh, this zone changes its, its meaning, its geopolitical uh, value. And now it is once more, and it will be once more, a kind of territory, territory of the clash between uh, real uh, important geopolitical powers between you know, West, Global West, Globalist West, uh, Russia and China. Russia and China are bringing when, when, with themselves to Near East, to Middle East, a uh, multipolar concept. They don't promote, for example, Russian idea or Chinese civilization. We are fighting there against hegemony, but not for our values, but to, we are trying to, to help the Islamic population to establish their own uh, independent civilization. They, uh, China and Russia uh, both are interested to have in Islamic world the one more pole, fourth pole or fifth pole, mm -hmm. uh, if we, we count with uh, Indian, Indian rice. So, and that is sincere. We don't want pro-Russian Middle East. We want Middle Eastern Middle East, neither American uh, nor, nor Russian, but we, uh, we are li liberators in that situation. And we are not uh, bearers of communist ideology or new imperialism. We are coming there in the role of liberators and helpers to free, to liberate Middle East from American hegemony, not in order to replace by our hegemony. We are coming just as friends and Chinese uh, are coming as friends. Oh, but, 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 of course, but of course, we talk about also some interests. Yes, interest, mm -hmm. but the interest that we could rationally calculate, for example, yes, we, but our, uh, our main goal, our ideological goal is to resist unipolarity, sure. to create the conditions so, so, of, of the multipolarity. Right. So today, Russia militarily and on the level of geography and natural resources and China economically are already two poles of a multipolar 
world. Also, you talked about India, uh, Iran, Pakistan, the Islamic world, Latin America and Africa are also major uh, poles. So Russia returns to the Middle East in totally new conditions and with different function. It is not returning as a second pole opposing the West, but rather as one of the few poles struggling against unipolarity in favor of multipolarity. Let us evaluate why this Russian return, sir. The evaluation in general. So uh, Russia understands very well that we could not resist American pressure. We could not resist unipolarity by ourselves. We tried in the Soviet Union, in the Cold War, in the bipolar system, and we failed. And now uh, the history has taught us very important lesson. We should not oppose to the unipolarity, bipolarity, and we need to accept new independent from us as well players. That is why Putin is so eager to create alliance with China, very different from us, different civilization, different system, different values. And that is why we need Islamic pole. So we, we should not uh, 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 impose our values. Uh, uh, so we understand the limits of universalism of Russian a Russian identity, and we will stay, we are going to stay inside of logical civilizational borders, but we need Islam as independent from the West, independent, uh, independent pole, independent power. So why we are so eager to create as well the alliance with Iran, with Turkey, the uh, difficult uh, uh, sometimes it's, it, it, they are difficult alliances, but we need to promote unity, strategical unity of Islamic world, and most of all, independent from the West. Our goal is to liberate the Middle East from the Western presence. They have came out from, go, went out from Afghanistan. They are going to leave Syria and Iraq and Russia in, and China and maybe the other poles will be uh, uh, interested, not only promote their own national interests, but they are interested in having Islam as independent, independent unity. Right. Upon this return, sir, what is by far on top of the Russian agenda vis-a-vis -vis the West uh, Asia or the Middle East uh, region? What are its priorities in the year 2022? So, uh, if you remark, we are more and more involved in the Libya, for example. We try to help to, to restore a kind of order there. We, 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 we have some uh, special relation with Haftar, with uh, uh, Saif Gaddafi, uh, but we don't reject from the very beginning the uh, connections and the contact with other uh, 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 opposing groups in Libya. We are still uh, in Syria. Now, after the uh, exit of American troops from Iraq, we will be more and more involved in that. Saudi Arabia and Gulf states try to, to, to establish better relations with us. Qatar is developing relations with us. So everybody is interested to have the Russia on their side. And Russia will try to keep a kind of neutrality. We don't want to get inside of the Middle, uh, Middle Eastern uh, contradictions. We, uh, we are friends friends uh, for all powers, for all peoples. No, we have no predilection. We have, uh, we, uh, uh, that is different from Americans. We don't separate, divide the Muslim world as uh, friendly and hostile. Mm -hmm. We are friend to all Islamic uh, nations. Yes. And what, what about, uh, sir, what about Lebanon? Lebanon is the, uh, is the uh, um, kind of uh, mind of uh, Middle East. Uh, there's a soft power of, of the uh, Middle East. And I think that uh, we should recognize this, um, uh, the role of, of being intellectual center uh, of uh, main processes in the Middle East in Lebanon. So I think that we should promote and establish 
closer relations with Lebanon, first of all, not on so much on the economical, and strategical, military level, but first of all on, on the intellectual uh, level, on the, on the level of, the, uh, of developing the project for Middle East. And th these, in that sense, uh, Lebanon could be the, the main, main territory here because so many tendencies contradictory tendencies are united i'm a meeting in, in the lebanon right. so it is very special special space is not uh, the country as other countries of middle east um, allow me now to uh, stay in the same region turkey and russia uh, have entered a new phase of relations that will have a direct impact on regional dynamics and the world and will not be pitted against each other in a recent uh, meeting in sochi president erdogan and president putin drew a road map for the future as they highlighted their red lines red lines seem to be everywhere sir what are these red lines and what about the issue of Crimea? Because we all know that Turkey is part of the NATO. So uh, that creates a problem for, for Turkey uh, because the NATO was uh, in, in the center of the uh, efforts to uh, overthrow Erdogan uh, and create the military uh, coup, coup uh, some years ago. So. Uh, that is a dangerous, uh, dangerous uh, connection, I would say, with NATO. But uh, uh, it is up to Turkey to decide its destiny. But Putin has um, uh, and Erdogan, they have created a common, a common vision of the reality, uh, and they have identified the points where our position coincide. That, that was more important. For example, issue of Crimea, it is not uh, uh, something that we, uh, we have, we understand in the same way. But uh, Turkey doesn't insist too much on the return of Crimea to uh, uh, Ukraine. Russia uh, doesn't insist too much on the recognition of uh, fact of uh, reunification. But we have the other issue uh, where our position coincides. For example, um, re-establishment, uh, uh, the, the space of the Southern Caucasus, uh, so uh, Azerbaijan, Armenia, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, as uh, security in the Black Sea. That's very important. Continuation of the good relation in the um, Mediterranean Sea. So our red line with Turkey are not so critical because uh, Erdogan and Putin both are realists. Uh, they could rationally calculate uh, their national interest. They could make reality check and they could accept divergence. They could accept something, uh, absence of the, of the same position on many issues in Libya, in Italy. Uh, we are on a different, uh, we have different opinion, uh, but in the Black Sea and the Eastern Mediterranean, in the Southern uh, uh, Caucasus, uh, Caucasus, we have this more or less close uh, or similar positions. But Turkey understands, Erdogan understands how important modern Russia is for security of Turkey. And Putin understands how important Erdogan's Turkey is for Russian security. And th the same with Iran. With Iran, we have better, uh, better relations. Uh, we have sure. no disagreement uh, uh, with Iran. Yes. Uh, and Right. Yes. Now, sir, concerning the JCPOA talks, experts say that what should be noted here is the context. The significance of these Vienna talks lie with their wider context. Iran simply stated its red lines and that all sanctions must be lifted. Note that the Iranian position is almost uh, identical in content to that enunciated by Russia vis-à-vis -vis the U.S. in respect to Ukraine. Putin's demand to Washington is that uh, Russian interests uh, and red lines be formally acknowledged and uh, accepted. Uh, the same thing goes also for China and Taiwan, another red line. Why, in your opinion, is Washington myopic vis-a-vis -vis the red lines as well as the spheres of influence? 
all that, all these cases are not isolated. They fit in the frame of this emerging multipolarity because recognize the uh, Iran as subject, recognize the Russia as subject, Turkey as subject, uh, Pakistan as subject, and China as subject. That that means to recognize the um, or existing multipolarity and if you are recognized as uh, independent pool you can have red lines and i think that uh, now that is very uh, very very difficult situation uh, when everything is balancing is balancing whether uh, united states will accept the right of the other to, to have their uh, red line and to insist on them. Uh, or it uh, uh, tries to, to, to start the, the, the war in order to, to, to save a uh, unipolar system when uh, all the rules are dictated only by, by one uh, uh, subject. Mm -hmm. And in many, uh, this ending unipolarity is tested it is tested by Iran, is tested by Turkey, is proved by China, is proved by Russia. It, we, we, we are making a kind of hackers attack against mm -hmm. unipolarity everywhere on the uh, geopolitical, economical, uh, strategical right. level. And finally, sure. the system should fall, unipolar system. Sure. Now, uh, the whole uh, media frenzy uh, has a madcap tone that is disconnected from reality uh, with all this flurry of noise in the Western mainstream media that war is imminent and so on and so forth. Here, don't you think, sir, as a philosopher, as a sociologist, that what the world needs today is a realistic and credible media reference that can rebut and deprive the Western media of its fabrications and narratives in promoting wars, which have proven time and again that they are not related to reality and lack any veracity. It's just ripe with slogans like human rights concerns, protecting democracy, terrorism, blah, 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 based on the West ideological biases as well as lies and rumors. I think that um, the media uh, has nothing to do with the uh, truth. The truth uh, is uh, uh, the main concern of philosophers, of scientists, of religious people, but not the media. Media just transmit some epistemological, some uh, some political, ideological thesis. They and that uh, it, it, media isn't isn't reflecting the reality it tries to shape the reality any any media any uh, in, information is shaping uh, to, it gives the form of uh, uh, of moods of uh, um, meanings uh, uh, of the society and when there is the war of uh, uh, a geopolitical war, uh, war between unipolarity and multipolarity. There, all all the field of the media is separated on two uh, two parts. One part, one kind of media defends and promotes this dying uh, in a, a unipolarity in agony and uh, disregarding any reality check. They, they just transmit, they project their wishful thinking and self-fulfilled prophecy. Uh, uh, and, oh, and the other uh, part of the media defend the alternative, alternative multipolar reality, projecting uh, the alternative uh, point of view. And uh, that is about the war of ideas. Uh, the, and that uh, both, I would say, both camp has nothing to do with the truth. The truth is out of, of that. The, the real truth is is the um, concern of very special kind of people who, uh, that, that's not about media that is about philosophy that is about science that about religion allow me to uh, return to talk about europe sir 
With its culturally woke-style democracy, LGBTQI, human rights, and climate emergency revolutions, the EU has alienated both Russia and China and has chosen to launch internal culture war against Hungary and various other EU states over their reluctance to endorse woke culture, but more particularly their rejection of the EU Open Society project. And you know here what I uh, mean. In talking about Europe's cultural war, why, sir, it's about time to take matters seriously and why it matters, briefly, if I may ask. So, uh, the, the, uh, liberalism, it is idea to liberate individual from any kind of political of collective identity that is a main definition of liberalism and that is in progress historically liberalism acquired more and more dynamic trying to liberate individual from all kind of collective identities that is why they are now promoting lgbt values because sexual identity should be optional should be uh, the result of the individual choice and tomorrow that will be climate, that will be post-human species and, and so on. That is logical expansion of liberalism. And this new progressive liberalism is confronting not only with non-liberal, illiberal societies, but with the old versions of the same liberalism. They create the split inside of the West inside of the uh, of, of the of the europe inside of american society so that is very interesting phenomenon it is not just liberals against illiberals that is uh, as well there is new liberals uh, more progressive more lgbt more pro homosexual more pro robots and cyber tomorrow post humanist liberals against the old liberals and these rejected old liberals as Trumpists in the United States and traditional conservative liberals in the Europe, they, uh, against themselves, they become uh, our allies, uh, pragmatically uh, allies, because they are sacrificed, they are canceled, they become uh, they are becoming the victims of the same purge of neoliberals. They try to destroy it, not only uh, everything that they judge not to be in line with them, but as well their uh, own parts, they, they, they heritage, they old liberals that could not, uh, could not uh, be in line with uh, uh, neoliberalism. Sure. Alexander Dugin, influential Russian philosopher, strategist, founder of the fourth political theory. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing your eye-opening reading and piecing analysis. Bless you and be safe. And always a pleasure to have you, sir. Thank you very much. Best wishes. Best wishes to a great Lebanon. Thank you, thank you, my dear. ودائما الشكر لكم مشاهدينا الكرام على طيب المتابعة للتفاعل أكثر تابعونا على صفحات السوشيال ميديا وحتى نلتقي من كل فريق عمل من الداخل من كل الميادين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله.